What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another preview for you guys today. It's Chelsea versus Norwich at Stamford Bridge tomorrow night and before we start this preview I just want to say if you guys haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel and also don't forget to press the bell notification button to be the first person to know whenever I upload any new content. Now, it is Chelsea versus Norwich tomorrow. We may still be in third place, we may be in fourth place, it all depends on the Manchester United Southampton result. But honestly, we are even lucky to be in this conversation after Saturday. Saturday was a disaster class from start to finish, from the tactics to the way the players came out onto the field to the way the whole 90 minutes progressed in the game management throughout then. It was embarrassing and to be honest we could have thrown top four away right there and then if it wasn't for the fact that Leicester City's collapse the day afterwards was even worse than that which I'm not gonna lie God might as well just be a Chelsea fan with the amount of times we keep getting away with this sort of BS our consistency has been very poor this season and if anything it's the same thing as last season where everyone was crawling into a race for top four and no one was showing any consistency but we're still keeping among the pack even though our results ain't been all that good Sheffield United was embarrassing. Uh, the best thing we can really try and do is count that one off as a loss and just move on because we can't really dwell on it too much. If we end up not making top four because of it, it just is what it is. But we can't let that beat us up too much because if we do that, we're going to lose focus on the games ahead and then top four will definitely be finished. Sheffield United was a disaster, but let's just try and lick our wounds and learn from it and move on. Like I said, we might be in fourth place depending on the Manchester United Southampton result. I know any other result for Manchester United than a win should keep us in third place. City's ban has also been overturned by um, UEFA, no, by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, which means that they will be in the Champions League for the next two seasons, which means that any hope of fifth place potentially getting us Champions League football is now officially in the mud. So that's something that we also need to take into consideration. There is going to be no let-offs towards the end of this season. If anything, this might even be harder than it was last season. Last season, we crawled to third. And by that I mean we literally crawled. The only reason why we made it was because Tottenham had one eye on the Champions League final. Arsenal were just Arsenal. And United's collapse at the end of last season was just unprecedented. After the way they started off with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, no one expected them to drop off the way that they did. This season it looks a lot harder because Manchester United have progressively gotten better as the season's progressed. Leicester City have been on a big downturn and it's not even since lockdown, it's been since the turn of the year if we're being honest. Leicester City before 2020 and Leicester City after 2020 look like two completely different teams. So we are potential. not gonna lie, it doesn't look as bad as it sounds because Top four is still in our hands. We've also got the very lucky thing that Leicester City are playing Manchester United on the last day of the season. So one of those teams, if not both, are guaranteed to drop points. That is something that we need to capitalise on as well. But no more slip-ups because slip-ups are the entire reason why we're in this position. I think if we'd be in West Ham home and away, we'd be in the race for second. If we had a bit of a better home record, we'd probably be in the race for second. If we were better against teams in the lower half of the table, we would probably be in the race for second. Now, we are in a tight top four race because we haven't been consistent throughout the entire season. Which, again, if we get top four, it's a great season for the way we start this season and the way the season looked when we originally were looking into it. But... With how well we've been this season and with how long we've been in the top four, it's going to look so embarrassing if we drop off at the final hurdle, which is something that we really need to try and not do. Now, we're facing a Norwich City side that have just got relegated. They lost 4-0 to West Ham at home, which is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to speak too much about West Ham because we all know what happened both times we played them this season and... Certain guys from other fan channels have a moan about it, but it is what it is. Uh, the thing about facing this Norwich City side is that don't underestimate them just because they got relegated because that is literally how we're going to take a 1-0 loss and then top four will actually be mudded. We really can't underestimate this Norwich City side. Norwich are fearless. It's kind of the reason why they've dropped out of the Premier League this quickly and why they never really looked like they were staying in for a long period of time, but... This is also the thing, they are fearless. They have a good attacking philosophy, they're strong pressers, and they will be waiting for a single mistake that we do. Fark said a key quote which just stuck with me, and he said, perhaps the pressure is off now, we have nothing to lose. 
That sounds very worrying and it's giving me a little bit like Norwich City Tottenham Hotspur vibes and I don't not in any way am I trying to say that we're like Tottenham Hotspur but I'm saying it's giving me a little bit of a vibe where the the relegation side has just has just finally had their worst nightmares confirmed and they feel revitalized and re-energized as soon as that happens and we could be facing a completely different Norwich side to the one that we expect we have to be honest the even back it remember the when we faced them early on in the season it wasn't an easy game then We've got, we took the lead twice and they came back just like that straight afterwards. They are going to be a good attacking side and they're going to be waiting for a single mistake on us. They'll be trying to capitalise on space that we leave in behind. So we need to not be complacent on the ball. We need to make the most of the time when we have on the ball. And we need to make those key moments count. It kind of feels like the Watford game where Watford we did win comfortably. But it was all about getting that first goal. Everything was frustrating until Barkley got that assist through to Giroud for the first goal and then the game slowly started to open up. So with this game, as easy as, well, as straightforward as it sounds, we just need to score first and we need to score early because the more we keep Norwich in the game, the longer this game is going to ride out and we need to get three points. Like that is under, that can't be underestimated, especially for the fact that this is relegated Norwich. As much as I'm saying don't underestimate them seriously, if we can't get three points against Norwich who have just been relegated, we should not be talking about Champions League football, even if we are getting Ziyech and Werner and potentially have us. If we can't beat Norwich City, let, let's just be real. Maybe the, top, maybe the top four race is something that's just got too far ahead of, from us at the final hurdle. Uh, moving on to injury news. Not much injury news actually, only N'Golo Kante out for the Norwich game, might be back in time for the FA Cup semi-final after the injury versus Watford, but other than that no real injury news, Christensen got hauled off at half time but he should be back to play again today and uh, I'll be real after Saturday's performance is literally the only way is up for Andreas Christensen. Let's go straight into the predicted lineup before I wrap off this preview. In goal we're going to start off with Kepa. Really could have done better for the second goal against Sheffield United, but again, it's got it's the goalkeeper position. I don't think we're going to change that up anyway, regardless. So Kepa starts back four, and this took me a while to think about because I was thinking about whether whether I'd see Chelsea doing a back four or a back five. I'm thinking a back four mainly because I do think we're going to want to have more attackers going forward anyway. Back four is. I'm going to say the same. Reese James will play at right back. We do really need to start seeing him have more impact in the first half though because he starts games way too slowly since lockdown. I get he's not fully match fit, but we need to start turning him quicker. The only reason why I'm not changing the fullbacks is in any way is because I still think James and Aspi would be better than either James or Aspi and, As and Alonso or Emerson on either side because I just don't think either of them are good enough for what we need right now. Centre-backs. Um, Kurt Zuma is not going to lie, he's the bolt in to start right now. Centre backs is just a complete myth as it is, but right now Kurt Zuma's the best, the best one and the one that's the that's the most informed. So Kurt Zuma starts. It took me a long time to think about who I was going to put in centre back next to him because centre ah oh, centre backs just look like a joke right now. If we're being honest, I just pushed to Andreas Christensen because. I think we're going to see a lot more of the ball in this game, so I think I'd want to see someone who's a bit more, who's a bit better on the ball and a bit more technically solid. I don't think Rudiger is as technically solid as Andreas Christensen. And like I also said with Norwich wanting to wait, like waiting for mistakes from our club, Rudiger will make a lot of mistakes. Rudiger is very rash, so I'd rather go for Andreas Christensen. Christensen had a horrendous performance on Saturday. But I still think for this game, he's going to be more that more of what we need than Rudiger will be. Aspi, like I already said, starts at left back. Um, moving on into midfield, it took me a while to think about we were going to start in DM, but I'm pushing for Jorginho. The only reason why is also it's again it's because it's a completely different team to the Sheffield United with to the Sheffield United game with what I think is going to be a completely different mindset as well. Um, Norwich are going to try and press us and they're going to try and be a lot more attacking minded than Sheffield United are. Sheffield United were just after defensive shape and when it came to Jorginho, cutting out passing lanes. I think when it comes to this sort of game where they're going to give us a lot less time on the ball and try to ask a lot more questions, you want someone who's got a quicker mindset on the ball. It was either going to be between Jorginho and Kovacic for me, but I'd rather see Jorginho in one of the attacking eight positions because 
George, um, Kovacic might be decent bringing the ball out from um, the lone DM position. Like he is, imp he is impenetrable from a press, and going forwards, his dribbling is just crazy. But if he starts going forward and he does lose the ball, which let's be real, even Kovacic on the ball is a hard thing to try and describe, but it could happen or the pass could be a bit sloppy. That creates another opportunity for Norwich to counter-attack. I think Jorginho will be a lot more solid on the ball, a lot calmer, and he'll make quicker decisions. And when he, and when I mean quicker decisions, he'll make better decisions in quicker time. So that's why I'm going to go with Jorginho. I'm going to go with Kovacic as well as one of the attacking eights and Mason Mount on the other side. Mason Mount got brought off and to be honest, it was probably his worst performance coming out of lockdown, but that's because of how high he set the standards. Mason Mount still has to start regardless, and especially with the injuries that we have in midfield, Mason Mount starts. Pulisic, left wing as well. Again, bolt on to start. He's probably been our best player since, lock since we've come out of lockdown. I don't need to explain it too much. Pulisic starts. Um, right wing, I'd go for hudson Adoy. I... Hudson Odoi or Willian to be honest, but I think we could do maybe one different change up in the lineup. So maybe rest Willian a bit more for the United game in the semi-final. I don't think he was that good in that in the Sheffield United game either. But I do want to see Hudson Odoi get some more minutes. I do think this is also a very good opportunity for him to get some starting minutes. So I say we make the most out of that. We start Hudson Odoi. Up front, Olivier Giroud, Tammy Abraham had an awful game against uh, Sheffield United and we didn't look like we were going to do anything until Olivier Giroud came on and when Giroud came on it was too late. So Olivier Giroud starts, he's been the better striker since coming out of lockdown so he starts for me. Uh, score predictions, God knows but uh, let's just say 3-1 Norwich, I think it would be a bit too far to say we keep a clean sheet but yeah let's go 3-1. 3-1 Norwich, sorry, 3-1 Chelsea. If I said 3-1 Norwich, I'm so sorry, but 3-1 Chelsea. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel, guys. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my predictions down in the comment section below, except if I said 3-1 Norwich, because that was just a stupid mistake, so ignore me for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care, and we will see you very, very soon. Hopefully, we'll still be in third place by the time the Southampton game is finished, and hopefully, we will still be in third place by the time the Chelsea game is finished as well. Take care, like, and subscribe. Peace.